Hello there, this is Amass Games, and this is a video from a bit of a height. This is because of the space I need to just show you the uh, game from. This is called the Quacks von Quidlinburg, or the Quacksalber von Quidlinburg in English. Uh, the Quacksalber, I think, of Quidlinburg, or Quacks, as I just usually call it sometimes as a shorter name. And this is a game that won the Game of the Year last year at the East Builders Jars. It's been out about a year in German. This is actually the German edition of the game. Some of the rules here are in English, and it's a nice kind of brief overview rather than going through the uh, quite extensive but very reasonable rule book as well. I did first play it in English out of interest. It's just uh, somebody had a spare copy. So inside of a board, this is basically a cauldron, which I'll show you. You need one per player. You also need uh, something else, which is the sort of central uh, board, which everybody looks at. And I'll just show you an example for one player. So imagine this is our board. Let's keep it bottom of the shot. And then we've got, uh, this is uh, the, the kind of player thing that we're working off as well. So what we're doing is we are representing alchemists, we could say, as a whole other game. Um, it comes with these bags, and I'll show you what else it comes with. It comes with these player tokens. It comes with chips. And we're basically making up potions. But we want to make the best potion possible, and we'll get victory points, we'll get money for doing that. Having said that, the risk is your potion could explode, and that's because you've chucked too much stuff in that makes it a bit too volatile. So I'll just lay the whole board out, as I always do, and you'll get to see what happens. So I've chosen to arrange this in a certain order. You'll only need uh, <clears throat> one of these initially in the game. And uh, these are rubies. You can use them to buy stuff and things like that. So imagine we're playing as this colour. So this is one person's bag. This is the thing I'll explain last. This is to do with whose turn it is. So we just chuck out all the stuff for one person's bag. What you should really do is probably choose the cauldron outline colour to match the person's board. So uh, this actually contains two people's stuff because you're playing at least with two people. So you take your potion kind of symbol. Let's say this is grey actually. These actually are identical, and you place it over here. I'll explain what that means in a second. You start with the ruby, as I mentioned, other ruby for the other player, so you can start chucking stuff back in. You're going to chuck out the uh, token marker. So we start off obviously showing that we have sort of zero victory points, but if you get around the board, which typically you do see happening, they'll get to at least 50. So now we're going to just chuck in everything else we don't need. We're starting off with some tokens around here to show we're starting off at zero victory points. We're going to be up here showing the round, which you'll see in a second. Uh, just chucking past yellow. The colours do differ slightly to the uh, UK version. Um, these are a bit more, should we say, metallic in terms of look. Um, at least metallic colour, not in terms of metallic sort of paint. Everybody starts with a certain number of chips. It does tell you down here at the bottom what everybody starts with. So we have a two. Uh, we start with two of those. I know that the other player is going to have to have those as well. You start off with three ones, and that's with movement, you'll see in a second, and one three. So just check that's all right. You should have a total of seven tokens, four, five, six, seven, or chips as they're known. Right, this is something you also need. This goes here as like a dropper marker. There are some other things, but we don't need them yet. That's your rat. That's on the other side of the board, which I'll leave out and explain later. So you've got these tokens here, which you can um, purchase. You purchase the sort of money. Now, there's some debate or some discussion around this. I think it's best as that they've realized is to do it by, uh, by number, not by color. It's easier to find a color than a number because the color is everything. So let me just chuck everything else that we need in the game in and everything else away. So those are the twos coming out in a second. These are the ones. And these are the twos about to come out. Again, for the demonstration, we might not be using many of these, probably just gonna be using the, the ones probably. And what I like to do is you're never gonna use everything in a stack. I chuck one thing back in a bag, just so you know which bag to take it from. I like to do this in some games, if you know you're not using everything, just because it might speed up, um, especially new players, what's going on. So these tokens, you've got to remember what you have, but at the start you always know, you chuck this into your bag. So this one goes in, and additionally to that, uh, you're going to be chucking in, as it states on the board, a an orange and a green. 
So I do normally stick that in my first bag too. It seems like I haven't, or whoever last played this hadn't done that. So these all go in here. So we now know exactly what's in there. So we're going to start off with round one, and I just need to find out where the marker has gone for that. I think I usually play with these two colours, or somebody has been, and that's why uh, they're specifically set up. That's why orange and green are actually in this bag. So you find the um, first round marker. It's a game that plays two to four, with the expansion that plays with five. Plays over nine rounds, and what's happening is uh, we're going to see, and we've been pushing your luck to see how well we get on. So I need to chuck out these uh, single one token pieces. This is because depending on the number of players, you're gonna get more white chips and more sort of dangerous things coming out. You shuffle, and these are sleeved because these were in German, but I've put like, the English version in them now. So beginning of the round, um, you're gonna resolve a card. This says, move your droplet forward two spaces or take one purple chip. So let's just take a purple chip and see what happens. Uh, purple chips actually aren't very useful at the beginning of the game, as you'll see. Um, so I've got enough space over here, I kind of tested what we need to do. In the first round, uh, we're going to choose to play always with, you have to always play with orange. You play with uh, black, so if you're playing with two players in this version of the game, um, you can move your droplet forward once, and if you are um, leading, or if you're equal to somebody else, compared to one other person you're next to, but if you're beating two players, um, you're moving a droplet forward and a uh, ruby. So in this instance, if you're equal in a two player, but if you are equal to one other player, you're moving it forward once. If you're beating more than one or the person either side of you, uh, you move it a ruby and those things. You'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, now these things are slightly different. They've got these bookmarks and that's to do with the different variations you can have. I've played with all four. I've even ranked them. I think it was um, four, two, uh, one and three are my favorites in that order. And as you can see, that's book three. But let's just start off for the first one. So that goes out initially. And we're gonna have purple out in a bit. We're gonna have, uh, these come out later. So these, come, these are later game things. So the start layout is like this. So there's a few things to choose from, but that's it. Uh, the final one is blue. So they should all be visible. And now, Simultaneously, everybody takes a chip. So we've chosen to um, move the space two forward, actually not the purple. And now you draw. I hope you didn't pick up purple. If I did, I'll just chuck it back. And it goes across one, two spaces. And you keep going. But if you reach seven, it's fine. But more than seven, you go bust. One, two. One. It's got five. There could be a three. So we could say, imagine saying I'm going to stop. Um, but what you can do is spend one of these to chuck a white chip back in the bag. So let's just do that. Show you more examples and then just um, grab <clears throat> a green. Now green is useful because if a green is um, the final or penultimate chip, you're gonna get a ruby, and you'll see why ruby is useful in a second. And there's that three, so it's a good thing I waited. So I choose to stop, everyone else can continue. The only time when you want to do it exactly the same time is in round nine. The last round, you do this, and if it's empty, then you basically force if somebody wants to do something different. So in this instance, I'll get uh, 11 money and two uh, victory points. Now the thing is, if somebody else goes and they go further ahead, they get to roll a die and they get a bonus. So the downside with actually putting different bags is, let's, let's say the opponent gets this, they get a drop that move forward. You'll see what that means in a second. So the fact that I chose the beginning to move the droplet forward by two means otherwise I'd start from here. In the future games, it's always going to start from two. I might want to keep moving it forward, as you'll see, because if I hadn't have gone there, I'd have gone here, give myself a ruby, and you'll see, maybe that's a good thing too. I've got 11 and two victory points. It goes forward two, and because I didn't uh, explode, I've got 11 points to spend. I can buy up to two things, but they must be different. So what's the most efficient thing? Probably uh, a six and a five. So in this instance, every time I draw an orange, after that, and I already have one orange in my bag, remember, my place of red is going to go forward an extra space. So that could be quite a good thing to do. So imagine I've done that. The alternative, or the thing as well I'll be having, um, is doing a, this thing here. This means if I draw it out, I can draw something else out, basically, look at it, and then say if I want it, if not, I can chuck it back. Um, with two, you can look at two. With four, you can look at four, and you can chuck as many back as you want. So that's how it continues. And this is book one, just to show an example. 
and you've obviously then building up different things with an engine builder as well and then you start scoring so you do the die roll as i saw you do the blacks first then you do green then you do purple if they're in play um yellows are slightly different they just have a different mechanic i'll show them in a second uh, rubies so if anybody is uh, in a space where the next one would be a ruby they'd gain a ruby you then award the victory points which we've done you then do what we've done here so you can choose to take that if you went bust if not you could take that instead and finally if you have two you can refill your flask which you might want to do or instead move your droplet one space forward again so a strategy that i like to do is sometimes that so that's basically the game now the variance in the game each round, another card will be drawn. So in this case, it would say all players draw five chips. The player, this is a red card. You'll see what the difference are in a second. The players, the lowest sum gets to take one blue chip. All other players receive one ruby and put all the chips back in the bag. So the different colors, you've got blue, you've got red, and you've got, uh, yeah, purple, I think. So you've got this one. Strong ingredient, beginning with the start player. If you stop without an explosion, draw up to five chips from the bag and you can place one in your pot. So um, yeah, there's uh, obviously variations going on there. So these are the books. These are always the same for this varied number of players. So let's look over here. This one basically means if you have a green chip, you could uh, be kind of converting it. Um, this one, um, it's to do with, yeah, what you're doing on your next turn. So it's around, uh, and as you can see, you can be paying eight to go two, which means you're always gonna be moving two spaces or moving four spaces. Further around you're getting these points and start you know, increasing, I mean, you can get 14 or 15 at the end of your turn. I have finished here uh, quite early on in the game, but that was on a certain book. So here are those purples. If you draw one purple, uh, when you do the re resolution, you'll get one victory point, two, one and a ruby, three, two points and a dropper. And uh, in this one, you can convert. So that's quite interesting as well. And uh, then this then changes as well. So there's many different options, uh, even more books over here. And it's basically, if you land on a space with a ruby, you'll get one victory point. If it's a two chip, you get two victory, four and four. I've had that work as well, been effective. Um, various other combinations, uh, it's all pretty good. And there's nothing that really stands out as a bad thing. If you uh, draw your yellow chip, move an extra space. If you draw two, you get to go two, etc. And this one lets you not explode as quickly. So also pretty good. This one, at the end, you can pick one of your one chips and convert it to a two. Or in this instance, one of your one chips to a four, because these are only ever one value. So you're going heavy on that kind of strategy. So uh, yeah, pretty handy and pretty interesting. Where you get round two, you can get victory points as well. So some things you can't use early on in the game. It's uh, more of a late game thing. Um, but yeah, that's uh, basically how it works. But it's been very effective. Uh, people enjoy it. Uh, the first game, I think uh, mostly everyone was new. It took about an hour and a half, but typically 45 minutes, 40 minutes, you can race through it pretty quick. So the other side of the board, so you've got another four other options here. What you're doing is you do place your extra chip and instead of maybe moving your dropper, so you can see it spirals in the direction, you can move along. And now you've triggered and you've got a free ruby, victory point, an extra blue chip, etc. And those can combo with the books. So again, with the four different books, I've played both sides. That's in that eight different combinations just there. With the cards they're saying is over 2,000, I believe. And that's how the game progresses. So as you'll see, I'm gonna start chucking stuff back in their respective bags. Uh, for some reason, there's a three in there. I'm not sure where that is. This is probably a good place to stick that and this actually, because you're always gonna use those initially. Um, but yeah, scores can be quite close. People can come from behind. The cards can be quite random, which could be a positive or negative. Something I haven't mentioned is when you get victory points, is if somebody say here and somebody else is up here, I should be using a different color, there's a rat's tail. This means they basically get to move their rat, which I had on the board but didn't end up showing you. They get to bring it out and basically whatever their dropper is for the next round, they get to put it an extra space forward. So you start chucking out from here, but then the rat goes away. So it just gives them a bit of a catch up. So yeah, this is the Cracks and Kudlingberg. I haven't played his newer one. Apparently it's even better. Uh, keen to, yeah, see that what it's like and uh, check it out. So, Try to make sure there's a ruby for each player. 
there are enough bags in the game and uh, it's uh, pretty effective. I think it's important to make sure um, people know how to pack things away. There is plenty of space in the box, it's a whole side stack. Um, gone through all these cards, some of them do have you know, quite strong things such as whoever rat tails behind you are, um, you can now make that into, uh, I think you can double the distance in droppers for that round. So make sure you chuck everything out again, but you have to start off with three, uh, obviously the right combinations. So we're going to be getting all this in. So you have the three, the two ones, the three ones. I think I might have chucked it back in the other bag. And yeah, then you're good to go. What else is there to say? Wolfgang Walsh had a great year. He also made The Mind, which has divided some people's opinions. Um, it's catchy, you know, I play it uh, when there's some downtime. But having said that, it's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting concept. But as I own Six Nymphs, which is another game happy to show you about, it's, uh, yeah, it's a game that has its detractors. Uh, it also has, I'm curious to know which country actually does actually have uh, the greatest fan base for it. That'd be a, an interesting curiosity. So what I'm doing now is I'm just sorting out the uh, extra orange and thingy for the second player as well. So that now is done, everything's been packed away, and then we get away it. So this new game came out only a few months ago, and I think it's only in German at this moment in time, and it involves um, still tablets for some reason. And uh, but there is this expansion for this. It's uh, sort of Hexen. Like I said, the extra player board. I always think this game is now a five player game. Of course it isn't uh, in the base game. It's a bit of a shame, uh, partially, but there's numerous games that of course uh, only plays a four and even fewer for some other games. So I think it's a good entry and I can see why, um, yeah, if you went for a three player, it wouldn't make much sense. I don't think it would have won Spielders Yards at that player count. But chucking an extra player board um, was a, a natural choice, I think, as a way of getting an expansion up to an extra player number in addition to being able to try out new stuff, new potions. And apparently the potions are good. Despite seeing it, um, I just happened to teach somebody this game instead because the more people you get to teach, the more people you get to play with, and thus you're on the level playing fields to then play with the expansion. Um, as for buying the expansion, I'm uh, not certain about that, only because I've now played everything on the base game. So yes, I've, I'm well versed in it. I do have that promo though, if you've seen the Spielbox video. So that's another potentially eight combinations I could consider looking at. And yes, having that extra player number would be great. Um, this copy I haven't uh, taken around to too many places, uh, too many unique places. Um, and for that reason, it's a, it's a decision on whether I think it's worth it. Um, do like the artwork as well. He's also made, I think he did make a total of three games that came out last year. Can't recall what the other one was this moment in time. I do like the fact that, uh, uh, yeah, it's an interesting shape. I mean, this expansion, you basically have something chucked on the side. So that's how that works. So that's everything done. The other options on here is you get victory points, one or two. You saw the ruby, dropper, and you can also uh, get uh, the pumpkin. So the pumpkin's pretty non-ish, cheap to buy, but the thing is, if you get certain player cards, that's quite effective. So everything just chucks back in. Um, not exactly fiddly, but at the same time, you do need to look out for all the little bits, um, those little small chips. You can get plastic tokens to sort of improve that. My issue with the plastic tokens is apparently they're not perfect um, bits. So that's the Cracks one Quiddlingburg. Throw it up. It's by Schmidt. And it's a standard Galaxy large box size. Reset that to zero. At least in one arm, a bit of a weight to it. Um, but uh, yeah, what I was pretty much expecting. So that is Quacks on for Quiddlingburg. I hope that made some sense. And uh, enjoy it. Thanks very much.